Yo, what is good dev guys? Welcome back in this video. I want to show you guys how to use the settings that we created in the last video inside of the gameplay ability that we just created. So let's go ahead and get started with that. We need to navigate to our character class because the character will always be known to the ability. So whenever we initiate an ability or whenever we activate an ability, the character will be known to that ability because it is passed in as the ability system components avatar actor. So let's go ahead and go to this character class and we need to create a couple of functions here that will allow us to pull from that shared settings class that we just edited here, this, this shared settings class here. So if we go back to the character, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and right click and close other tabs. Just this is the only thing that we need to focus on right now. So I'm going to find a good place to put this. Uh, you, you could see how organized Epic is. I can only imagine when I was looking at the damn Unreal Tournament code, I would always get lost because of their organization. They didn't really use regions and shit like that. Uh, but I'm going to come down here. I'm going to make a region. And this is just going to be specifically for shared setting access. We just want to use this section to get access to our shared settings. So I'm going to make this public. We will need to call this in different places. And the first thing we need to do is create a function. And uh, there's that bug. We need to create a function that gets a reference to our shared settings. You can see here that, um, GitHub Copilot is helping me out here. So we need to make a for declaration to this shared setting. And I'm gonna actually do this up top. So copy that and paste it here. And then I'll go back to that. Whoops, it's taking me back to where I don't wanna be. And so we can get rid of this. So this will get a pointer to our shared settings. Uh, we also want to go ahead and make a blueprint callable function that we can call inside of our blueprints. So I'm gonna make this blueprint callable and blueprint pure. I'm gonna test this because uh, I, I I'm definitely gonna test it. Okay, so I'm gonna make this blueprint pure, and let's just see if I'm able to call it in blueprint. That way I can stop doing blueprint callable blueprint pure. So we're gonna put this in a category of um, we're gonna put it in the Lyra folder. And it's going to be in the settings sub folder. So this is going to return a bool and it's going to be get toggle aim. And I am going to go ahead and make this a const. And we also want to do the same thing, but we want to do it for our sprint. I hope you guys can see what's coming next. You feel me? We're going to get into aiming and shooting. Uh, that's going to be a depth, a uh, very deep section. So I hope you guys are ready for it. So here we got the get toggle aim. We got the get toggle sprint. And last but not least, we need a private section here. And this private section is going to hold just a, a U property that keeps a cached reference to our Lyra settings. So Let's go ahead and implement all of these functions. And what am I getting here? Must be a U class, U struct. Okay, let me just name this different. See what we got here. Oh, it's doing the wrong name. So U Lyra uh, shared settings. No, that's right. That's right. You uh, Lyra settings shared. That's what we need. <laughs> oh God, I was using the wrong class. Okay, so let me uh, forward declare that right here, and I'll just paste that at the top. You Lyra settings shared, and let's copy this. Oops, paste that. We'll delete this. Go back up top and fix the mistake we made. That is GitHub Copilot for you people. It, it knew what I was thinking, but it was kind of off on what code it should be using. So good thing that error popped up so we can know. So now we have this cache variable that we can use here. So I'm going to implement all of these definitions. And for our first 
get Lyra shared settings, what we want to do is get a constant reference to our Lyra player controller. And this is a pointer, call it PC. And we could set it equal to get Lyra player controller. And we could say if our player controller is valid, so is valid and pass in our PC. That's valid. We want to go ahead and get a cons reference to our Lyra local player. And we call that our Lyra local player. And we want to actually use PC.get local player. And then we want to pass it the type of local player that we want. Oh, Whoops. Oh, we actually need to cast here. I'm sorry. So we want to say cast and that use something that I don't know what the, I don't know what that was. So we want to cast to our U Lyra local player and we want to use our player controllers local player here. And then we want to return our Lyra local players or our, here we call it LP. We want to return our LP. If it's valid, we want to return LP and we want to go ahead and grab our shared settings. If it's not valid, we just want to return null pointer. And here, uh, if we miss out on here, we'll return null pointer just to cover all of our butt cheeks. And now what we want to do for get toggled aim is a little bit different. You see, we created that, uh, that cache variable. That's so we don't have to call this function over and over. So in begin play, so let's look for begin play. And here we want to go ahead and set our shared settings. We want to set that equal to get shared settings right there. So this will go ahead and fill this variable. Now, I'm pretty sure we should only do this if uh, the player is locally controlled. So I'm gonna just say if is locally controlled, then we wanna do this. That way the server never will set this variable because since it since it's a serialized object on our PC, the server won't know anything about this. So back to where we were now in Git toggle aim. What we want to check is if uh, our shared settings, if that's equal to null pointer, then we want to use our function here. So we want to return Git shared settings and we want to get toggle aim from that shared settings but that's only if our shared settings is equal to no pointer else we else we just want to say return shared settings and we want to get toggle aim then we want to do the same thing oh, sorry i need to say return we want to do the same thing for toggle sprint so let's say if our shared settings is equal to null pointer, then we want to return, oops, our get Lyra shared settings. And we want to go ahead and get that toggle sprint. And if, if it's not equal to null pointer, we'll return the shared settings and get toggle sprint. Okay, so pretty much this is all we need to get started in the inside of the ability system component or inside the uh, gameplay ability. So I'm going to run that as a debugger. Okay, so that compiled successfully without any error. So I'm gonna open up this sprint ability and we're gonna use those settings that we just created. So here we're using has authority. I do want to switch this. I want to use the switch on net mode. Uh, I've noticed in my own project that this has authority causes a lot of issues when you're running that standalone mode or uh, when you run it as a listen server. 
because um, some things won't run. Some things we're not running as the authority. But if you're playing as a standalone, you are the authority. And if you're playing as a listen server, you are the authority. So you need to run everything pretty much through this switch on net mode. And it's pretty much the same thing. It just allows us for more options here. Standalone. Um, we want to do dedicated server going through here. We want to do listen server going through here. But as a client, we don't want to do this here. If, if we're just a client, we don't want to do this. Uh, we want to go straight here. And finally, once we get to this point right here where we're waiting for the input to be released, we only want to check this if we are locally controlled. So that will eliminate the has authority thing because even if we are the... Uh, the standalone or the listen server we are locally controlled so basically we want to get our uh, actor info and i'm gonna no, i'll break this and let's get our player controller from this and check if this is locally controlled or if it's a local player controller and i'm gonna click on this node and say hide unconnected pin just to Get rid of some of that clutter. So if this is true right here, when we come through here, this is true. We want to go ahead and get our liar character. We already got this node here, so I'm going to cut it and I'm going to paste it over here. We want to get our liar character and then we want to get our toggle sprint value here. And the reason I'm doing this on the local player control is because the server won't have access to this object where this actual value is saved. So it will return false or it will probably hit a no pointer and crash the engine uh, running this on the server. So once we check this and we could probably throw this into an and, but I want to separate this check from this check because we want to do two things based off of this so if uh, this puppy comes through as true if we are using toggle sprint we want to wait input press again so this will wait for the input to be pressed and on press what we want to do is end the ability if we are using hold sprint which is the false value here, we want to wait on the input to be released. And when it's released, we want to end the ability. So now we've just allowed our players to choose between a hold and a toggle sprint. So right now, if I go and I press play and before I sprint, I look at my settings option menu here, mouse and keyboard toggle sprint is on. Um, did I just turn it off? Okay, that, no, that's the invert horizontal axis. So toggle sprint is on. If we go back here and I press my sprint key, we are sprinting. And if I press my sprint key again, the sprinting ability has ended. Same thing if we go to our options menu and we go mouse and keyboard and we change toggle sprint to off and we apply that and we press back. If I press my key, and hold it down, I'm sprinting. If I release it, I'll stop sprinting. If I press my key and hold it down and sprint, I'm sprinting. And if I release it, I'm no longer sprinting. And that, my friends, is how you create your own custom settings inside of this Lyra code base that's crazy, man. I'm telling you, bro, it, it gets super deep. Uh, I've done so many custom things uh, to this project. I, I'm gonna try to share as much knowledge as I can. I'm over here trying to wall around like this is my project. I'm gonna go ahead and stop this. Uh, so that's pretty much all I wanted to cover in this video. That is pretty much the end of this introductory section here. And the next section, we're gonna start getting closer and closer to the actual gunplay of the game. And we're going to start with the procedural IK aiming system that I learned from Sneaky Kitty. I'm going to just show you how to set that up inside of Lyra and show you where to plug it in inside of Lyra. Um, also, I'm not going to go as in depth as he did. He has a whole 
30 video course. I'm going to try to cover it in like maybe five to 10 videos and just show you guys how to get it set up, what math you need to kind of focus on so that you yourself could change the different settings of the system and make it work better for you and also where to plug it in, of course. So if you guys are ready for that, I'll see you in the next section. Peace.